Hey, it's Jeff with YourLearningCareer.com. If you've been applying for instructional design jobs and you find that you're not getting anywhere, it may be that your resume needs rescuing. And so that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So I've been in learning and development for the past 25 years, um, the whole time in corporate America. So I've done the job search thing time and time again, and I've worked for companies uh, big and small, including CarMax, IBM, even Walt Disney World. Uh, so I do have a lot of experience with, with working on my resume and making sure that it gets me in the door to those interviews. I also have experience on the other side. So I've actually been part of many job searches where I was the one reviewing resumes and deciding on who should come in and interview. So I've been on both sides. And uh, so in this video, like I said, I'm going to focus on instructional design jobs, but I'm also going to have some videos on other learning and development positions, which I will link to here um, as here as well as in the description. So keep an eye out for those too if you're interested in other L&D positions. All right, so let's get started. I have five main tips that I want to share with you today. Number one, the number one most important thing when it comes to resumes, and I put it right at the front because it's something I see over and over again, and it drives me crazy, and that is spelling and grammatical errors in your resume. You cannot have those. All right, let's take a look. I'm going to take, let's take a look at an example resume. So here is a resume. Now this is, this is part real um, because I don't want to embarrass anybody. So I don't have any real names of companies. I don't have a person's real name, but I will tell you that the errors and the information are from real resumes, okay? So I did not make the, these mistakes up. I did not make the descriptions up, okay? These came from real resumes, and these are the types of things that I've seen time and time again. So let's look at, first of all, right here in this profile at the top interested in becoming an instruction designer. So right off the bat, what am I seeing? Instruction designer, is that new? I mean, I've heard of instructional designer, I've heard of learning experience designer, I've heard a lot, you know, a lot of different terms. I've never heard of instruction designer, that looks like a typo to me. And then it continues, seeking a position where I can organize, plan, and implement the training slash safety needs of the organization. Okay. I, as a recruiter, as a hiring manager, as, as a decision maker, I may or may not go any farther than this. These types of errors are resume killers because what is going through my mind right now? If I'm looking for an instructional designer, I need someone who is fairly detail oriented, right? And when I see this kind of mistake on a resume, it it sends a big red flag to me as the decision maker because I'm thinking, oh my goodness, if this person can't even proofread their own resume that they're trying to get a job with, what are they going to do with the training materials that they create for me. So now I'm envisioning a whole bunch of PowerPoints with typos and, and grammatical errors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it scares me. So I may not even, and they may have, you know, if I scroll down, maybe they have all kinds of great experience after this. But guess what? I'm so turned off by this first paragraph and, and the errors that I've seen already. I don't even know if I can go any further. So that's why I tell you, please, you've got to proofread your resume. And I would even take the step of, um, you know, you can run it through spell checks, things like that. 
And you might even want to have, and you probably should have another set of eyes, take a look at your resume to make sure you don't have these kinds of errors because you could be the most qualified person in the world, but if you can't even um, bother to fix these types of errors, then, hey, I'm sorry, I don't want you to work for me. There are plenty of other people, right, who are gonna, um, who will have the, the skill, the, the proofreading skills, right, to, uh, that I would want. Okay. Let's move on to tip number two. So my second tip when it comes to rescuing your resume or refreshing your resume, you know, getting it into good shape is I would encourage you to really take a look at the job descriptions for this role. A lot of people will decide, oh, I think I'd really like to be an instructional designer because maybe they know someone who does it or they've heard things about it on the internet, whatever. And it is, it can be a great uh, job. But before you just dive right into it, you really ought to take a look at what you're getting into. Um, so not, not only from just a career standpoint to make sure it really is what you want, but also again, as part of your resume rescue, um, it will help you see the types of things that you should have on your resume. So let's do that. So right now I'm gonna go into some job postings. So right now I am on indeed.com. I just did a search for instructional designer. You know, different things are gonna come up. I think actually I put in instructional design, so it's bringing up jobs that have instructional design as part of them. But here's a good one, learning experience designer. So that's another, um, that's another job title you might see. And by the way, I would tell you, don't get too hung up with job titles because there are a lot of, there are a lot of different jobs that may not have instructional design in the title. And in fact, I didn't have, I only in the last few years, do I actually have instructional designer in my job title. Okay. So let's take a look. So this can help us. Like I said, this is going to help you with building your resume because you'll see what employers are looking for. So what are some things I see here? They want me to apply adult learning theory. They want me to design and deliver learning products. They want me to convert courses um, for web and mobile-based delivery, okay? Here's another one, instructional design and training specialists. What do they want? They want, okay, they also, they want me to create multimedia. They want me to develop e-learning. I see e-learning a lot here in this description. Um, e-learning courses, e-learning activities, um, quality assurance. Okay, so this will start to give you an idea of what employers are looking for. Okay, so this is my tip number two. And then let's move into tip number three. Tip number three is now taking a look at after you've looked at what employers are looking for in an instructional design position now you need to do a comparison you need to look at your resume and see does my resume hit on some of these things so let's look at our sample resume and see how it does compared to these job descriptions all right so what do i have here i have branch manager, managed, trained, and developed a team, okay, Manage, uh, management assistant, I ran a, a car rental branch, I developed, trained, and mentored, okay, so at least I have the word trained in there, um, and I do have this MS in instructional design. Looking at what those job descriptions said, I'm really not seeing any kind of a match. And so if you are looking at your resume and your resume does not have anything that this has, because I look at this, I don't see any of all these things that this company is looking for. I don't see any of it in this resume. Now, does that mean that this person has none of that experience? No, I don't think it does. They probably have some experience that is just not reflected on the resume. So one of the things you can do, uh, let me show you a tool to help you identify 
this kind of um, experience. So this is, um, this is a free tool that I've created to help people build up their resumes because I think a lot of times people don't realize the experience they have. And so I've created a, these worksheets to help you kind of figure out, oh yeah, I do have experience with this, this, and this. So it's like I've, a checklist where you can start thinking, kind of brainstorming about what you've done, um, place to take notes, and then, and by the way, this will be linked, I will link this tool in the description so that you can get it for you can get it and use it as you see fit. But like I said, it's totally free. When this person applies for an instructional design job and the computer, because you know most of the time when you apply for a job, it's going to be a computer that's trying to match the keywords uh, to the job description. And this person really does not have anything that's going to match. Now let me show you my resume. So on my resume, I actually have, see, I put a lot of this stuff in a, I, I, I have an areas of expertise section. So I put a lot of these keywords here in my areas of expertise. I also sprinkle them around in my, um, you know, in my different job titles and descriptions. And then I also, I have keywords at the bottom of my resume too, because I want the computer to find me you know, because a lot of times that's how you get weeded out. Then, so my fourth tip is if you're looking at your resume, if your resume looks like this and it really is not um, matching what uh, are in the employer's job descriptions, then you want to start, you know, not only, I told you, brainstorm and find out, find things that you've done, um, either at work or as a volunteer, but then I have this section here about your resume and this is where you can start creating those lines that you want to put in your resume um, that are specific to the job descriptions. So again, this is part of that L&D experience builder um, that I will link to in, my, in the description and this, so this is another worksheet where you can um, start to put together phrases that will match what the employer is looking for. And then my final tip with building up your resume, rescuing your resume, um, we want to identify the things that we have done, okay? But at the same time, I would also, so let's just look again. So if I go back into this job description, what you'll see here, look at this, experience using e-learning development tools such as, and it lists some of the ones they'd like to see. Well, I would tell you another thing you should consider when you are looking for a job in instructional design is to not only identify the things that you have experience in, I would also identify things where I don't have experience. So maybe I look at this list of software and I realize, oh gosh, I don't have experience in Audacity. Uh, maybe, maybe I think, oh, I don't even know what Audacity is. Uh, and maybe, you know, Audacity is audio editing software. And then you realize, okay, ooh, I need to learn audio editing. Or Maybe you don't, or you know, maybe that's something you really have no interest in and you don't want that kind of a job and you, you say, okay, I won't apply for jobs that require that. But uh, you should have an idea of some things that you wanna work on. And again, going back to the experience builder, that's uh, this last page here is where I have a worksheet where you can identify, I, I say identify like a top three skills that you wanna develop and then come up with a plan on how you're going to develop that skill. So if it's a software, like Audacity is a free audio editing software. That's easy. I mean, you can go out, get it for free, and then you can probably jump onto YouTube and find videos on how to use Audacity. And so that's actually something you could do while you're job searching. You know, you could build that skill and maybe create a little audio clip and say, hey, look, I created this in Audacity. And you could put that on your resume, you know, because you've, you've learned it and you've done it. Now, some other things might take a little more 
uh, practice or, or, or might take a little more time. So um, in addition to software, there might be skills like um, you know, interviewing subject matter experts or you know, doing an audience analysis, these kinds of things. But whatever it is, you, you identify those skills and then you kind of create a plan for yourself on how you're going to build that experience. So that's another thing I included in this tool to help you build up not only your resume, but to build up your experience for when you apply for these jobs. So again, that is the L&D Resume Experience Builder. I will link to it in the description. The other thing I want to tell you about is I also have an article um, called The Ultimate Guide to um, L&D Jobs. And I'm gonna link to that article as well because I have a whole lot. So not only do I talk about resumes, but I talk about interviewing and different things like that to help you with your overall job search. So that will be in the description as well. So those are my top tips on how to rescue your resume, how to rescue it, refresh it, whatever you want to call it. But these are some things you can do to get your resume noticed when you are applying for instructional design jobs. Please like this video if you found it helpful and uh, check out my other resume rescue videos that I will um, link to in the description and I'll put here when they're ready. I thank you and we'll see you next time.